Hey everyone, welcome to the first video of its kind, never done before on YouTube, a devlog! I'm definitely not the first to make one, and I won't be the last, but I want to make a devlog for our next game for a few reasons. Um, I think really just as a way to keep myself on track and stay motivated to keep working on the game. And the second was the marketing for Pogo Rocket, which is my last game. Uh, kind of really sucked so i'm gonna try a lot harder to get this game out there and i've never used unity so i think this is going to be a very big learning process for me i hope that whether you're new to unity or have been using it for a while or are even just in the beginning stages of thinking about making a game and haven't even touched an engine before then i hope that we can sort of like work through our problems together and we can learn from both of our own mistakes and successes. So the question remains, what is this new game I'm working on? It's going to be an atmospheric horror game that takes place in an underwater facility. Obviously a first devlog and all, so I don't really have much to show off, but that's the goal anyways. Um, but yeah, the working title for this game right now is called Bounding Main, um, and we'll probably be releasing it on Steam for free. What I would really like to do, which, you know, we'll see if it's really going to happen or not, because it's kind of hard, um, is to implement some systems to sort of make the main, like, enemy monster uh, just a little more alive and sort of more intelligent. I think sometimes horror games can feel a little too predictable and railroaded. So I wanted to feel like it's sort of predicting your moves and it's always one step ahead. Oh, cool ideas, of course. But <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that all really pans out. And yeah, planning on making it free, which kind of sucks that I don't make money, you know, being someone that has to live and all. But I think it's going to be the best thing for our company in terms of publicity. And hey, if you guys support our videos, then maybe we can make them all free. So if you haven't seen the last video I did uh, going over my first game, Pogo Rocket, then feel free to check that out since I'm going to be sort of referencing a few things here and there from that. Yeah, we can go ahead and jump into it. So also just a heads up, <laughs> some of the first work I did, which was pretty basic stuff, I did not record. So yeah, sort of a big dum-dum over here, but it's really only initial setup, so you're not really missing much. First things first, gotta make the project. I just went with the first person URP template, since I figured it would make it a little bit easier to get started, which looking back kind of made it a little bit harder <laughs> in, in a few ways, but it is what it is. Yeah, movement works pretty well, you know, from that, as I would expect from an official template. Pretty solid foundation to work from. And after setting that up, I just sort of spent a little bit of time looking through Unity uh, and sort of just getting used to the controls and stuff like that. And I also got the whole version control stuff set up. So, you know, me and Ace, which is the other person working on this project, can keep them up to date and on track. So I thought for fun, uh, I would make it so you can collide with objects. And that wasn't too bad. <laughs> I do like the component system. I think it's a pretty flexible way to change objects and their properties, you know, instead of having to do everything through code. Yeah, after that, I thought I should add a way to pick up objects. And honestly, at this point, these things aren't super vital to the game. At least I think. We'll see. Um, but I think they're just sort of easier things to do just so I can get from more familiar with using Unity. And yeah, I followed a tutorial for the picking up stuff because I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> and honestly, looking back at that now, I think I might change it to a ray casting system instead of the way I did it with like an object, which I think just might be a little easier, honestly. But anyways, that's the stuff I did not record. Everything after I did. But first, a little background. So I'm a third year computer science student. So, you know, I know how to program pretty well and C sharp is really no problem. Uh, I mean, it's really just sort of like I already know the language from learning Java and C++. But I think the challenge that comes with it, though, is just understanding and learning about Unity's built-in object properties and functions. Like, what the hell does a Git component do, you know? And, you know, that's just the challenge with this. Like, when I use GameMaker, uh, I was super used to all the different built-in functions. Um, so I could tackle a project from the beginning to end with really without thinking about it too much. But now I sort of feel like a little baby that doesn't know anything. <laughs> and it kind of sucks. It's making me feel like I lost all of my programming ability, even though, you know, I know I can program. But here's how I'm feeling right now. Frustrated that I'm not super comfortable with Unity like I was with GameMaker. A feeling that I'm going to have to do everything myself again. 
like I did with Pogo Rocket. Worried that I won't be able to turn the game to what I want it to be. And worried that it's going to be another flop and waste of time like Pogo Rocket was. Yeah, none of those are really good feelings, huh? But I think this sort of thing just usually happens whenever starting uh, a new project like this. And of course, I'm excited to get working on it, but the doubts just sort of seep in during the beginning. And that's when I start to question my own ability as a game developer. <laughs> I think it affects me so much because I just, I, I really want to pursue this as something more serious. Um, and I think the idea that I might fail is sort of like a nightmare scenario. You know, I felt like I've been just so aimless with what I'd want to do with my life for so long. And honestly, like two weeks ago, I just got up and felt it in my bones uh, that I wanted to make games. And I don't just feel like I want to do it now. You know, I almost feel like I need to. But I just really think I have to ignore the bad thoughts for now and keep grinding it out. You know, eventually I'll get used to Unity's functions and Unity's pretty banging. So <laughs> I probably won't have to learn a new engine for a minute. I just hope uh, it can become more of a successful project for me and Ace. But anyways, sorry for the little detour. Just need to get my thoughts out. Uh, so this was the point where I was like, okay, I need to get working on the actual game now. So I think the next logical step is to sort of start getting the environment set up. And, you know, that involves me having to build and model the prefabs for everything. So I ended up doing just like a little bit of a concept art planning uh, phase. So, you know, I figured there's going to be a few main types of rooms in the game. There's going to be like the regular hallways. And then I want some more larger open rooms. And that would be for stuff, you know, like a living zone, bedrooms, offices, maybe a cafeteria, you know, just the usual living stuff. Um, so that sort of gives me a base of what I need to draw out. I also think making the hallways sort of submarine-esque would be good. You know, since it's an underwater high pressure building, sort of like a submarine. So I want ridges along the walls and basically those would be sort of like the areas where the segments were placed and bolted together. And of course we gotta get that classic pipe aesthetic. So pipes going along the wall somewhere and then you got the power cables going across too for the lights. And I think that sort of describes it. I, I do want to maybe add in moss and plants too, but I think I'm gonna try to do that procedurally maybe. You know, I can always go back and add that later. So uh, time to look at a bunch of submarine hallways. <laughs> and after, you know, sort of getting a general idea of the look I'm going for, it's time for the concept art. And, you know, I realized I uh, really suck at concept art. So I decided to sort of abandon that idea. I just jumped into modeling, which was looking much better than my concept art. So being the first object, you know, I'd sort of have to develop the idea. I don't have any other reference to go off of. So I just sent, uh, spent a while modeling this hallway, maybe 45 minutes or so. I thought it was looking pretty solid. Um, so I imported it into Unity. And there was a bunch of wacky lighting errors. The sun was just sort of uh, phasing through the wall into the inside. So I realized that open meshes don't usually uh, like to play nicely with Unity. So... And a, and a little context for this, I realized later, it had to do with the normals, and I probably could have gotten away with this, but I just went back and made it three-dimensional. Spent a while doing this since there's a lot of little holes, but I did get it all closed, and you know, it's looking pretty good. So now, to apply the material, and I'm just gonna say this now, figuring this out, I think, was literally the most difficult time I've ever had with anything before, at least making a game. Not only did it take forever to render out the materials and realize that I need to bake the textures, but it seemed like no matter what I did, whenever I put everything into Unity, it just looked awful. Uh, nothing was working. <laughs> Colors weren't lining up. Meshes were messed up. I mean, honestly, I was just ready to abandon the whole project and work on a 2D game because this is the most frustrating thing ever. I mean, it literally took me like three hours to get this garbage that still isn't working fully. Like, oh, at least the base color was sort of fine, um, but the normals were screwing it up. So I just ended that recording because I, I was just done at that point. Um, and honestly, that whole experience sort of <laughs> gave me second thoughts about trying to make a horror game um, because like it would be so much easier just to go with simple textures or more vibrant and cartoony type game. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I'm already this far, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, right after I ended that recording, I fixed the normals in like three seconds. <laughs> so here's that. But yeah, this is the final result I got from trying to get the textures working. 
I mean, it's like sort of working. There's there's a lot of problems though. First off, the roughness materials just don't work very well with this. The colors are way too dark and honestly looks nothing like it did in Blender. And I can't get some materials to bake onto the color image. So I am just sort of at a loss at that point. You know, originally reading the script, I was going to end this video on a somber note on a failure. But being from the future, I do have to say I did get this figured out. Um, and it turns out uh, part of the problem had to do with uh, swapping the UVs or clicking the swap UV button. Um, and that seemed to fix a lot of my issues mapping the textures to the models. And yeah, honestly, after doing that, that fixed most of my problems. I also decided to go back and change the materials before what I had is I had it set up with both diffuse and normal maps, um, which is fine. All good there, but I am uh, I was a dumb dumb and I didn't know really how to properly export those. So I got rid of the base color map and or the diffuse map as you would call it and i just used a normal map and honestly that worked a lot better for me it was just easier to render out the normal map and set it up in unity and it's like pretty good this is sort of not not exactly what i was imagining initially but i think it's pretty solid this uh yeah this is going to be sort of the look of the corridor moving moving forward at least until maybe we add some plants but yeah i think that's going to be it for the first devlog um I want to keep these, you know, relatively short. I don't want to drag them out too long. That's going to be it for now. If uh, you'd like to subscribe, then you can stick around for the second one. Uh, I'm going to try to get these out relatively quick. Obviously, editing takes quite some time. Not making any promises yet. <laughs> no schedules yet, but you never know. So, but I'll see all of you in the next devlog, and I hope you all have a great time working on your own games. Bye bye.